All right, continue on here on Locked On SEC. We're taking a look at some of the uh, regionals going on this weekend. And joining us now to talk all about it is our buddy Dave Schultz, host of Locked On Sunbelt. And uh, Dave, as we look at this uh, regional in College Station, the Texas A&M Aggies playing host to the uh, Louisiana Raging Cajuns along with the Texas Longhorns and Grambling, um, a really good Raging Cajuns team that is always seem to be a, a, a tough out for everybody when it comes to uh, postseason baseball. Uh, give me a general thought on what you've seen from this uh, Cajuns team this year. Well, it's been an interesting season. It's certainly been entertaining, Chris. You know, they started out really slow. They were 9-8, and eight, rattled off a 16-game uh, winning streak, won 21-22 before they ran into a little bit of uh, trouble uh, at Coastal Carolina on the road, at Troy on the road. Then they sweep Georgia Southern. Uh, then towards the end of the year, they their shortstop, Kyle DeBarge, just get kept on getting pitched to with runners in scoring position. You know, Coastal Carolina, I think Georgia Southern did it with the game on the line. I think Coastal Carolina did it with the game on the line. Southern, mid it, Southern missed it, it twice with the game on the line. And, you know, he was the preseason Sunbelt Player of the Year. He ends up winning that, sets the record for most home runs as a Cajun with 21 in a single season. He's had a phenomenal season. It'll be interesting to see how, you know, the, the Texases and the Aggies, if that's who they get, and, and Grambling deal with pitching to Kyle DeBarge with runners on base. He's only 5'9", a buck 70, uh, but he packs a punch in the right-hander batter's box. Uh, the pitching at one point in time was phenomenal for the Cajuns. Obviously, you're not going to win 16 in a row and 21 out of 22 without that. But uh, Andrew Herman, the, the Friday night starter for so long, did not pitch in the Sunbelt Conference Tournament. Uh, LP Langevin, the pitcher of the year in the Sun Belt, uh, has gone five, his last five Sun Belt outings. He's got an eight ERA. In his previous 10 uh, Sun Belt outings, he had a 0.7 ERA. So I don't know if that's he's tired or whatever the case is. He has struck out 40% of the batters that he's faced. Uh, so we'll see what happens there. Chase Morgan, the freshman of the year in the conference, he's really good. He can bring it a little bit more. Then Andrew Herman, Herman's going 85 to 87 with, you know, off-speed stuff and breaking ball, whereas Morgan can pump it past you if you're not sitting on it. And then you got Carson Fluno, who only took a no-hitter into the uh, eighth inning earlier this year. So uh, if the Cajuns pitching is there, and that's how it's going to be, um, that's how they're going to win. They're not going to smoke the baseball around by a lot of guys all the time. Uh, uh, different guys have stepped up. Throughout the season, it's mostly been Kyle DeBarge. And then, you know, John Taylor will be there. Duncan Pastore will be there. Trey LaFleur will be there. Caleb Steadley will have a big, a big ball game. Uh, Jose Torres, the catcher, has has had a, you know, way above expectation season. Uh, but if the Cajuns are going to compete, it's going to be, you know, Herman, Morgan, uh, Fluno, uh, Langevin, and then, you know, a David Christie or a Blake Marshall or a Blake McGeehee out of the pen. It's going to be the pitching that carries the Cajuns to a regional victory if they're going to do it. Yeah, it's it's it always seems like it's it's got to be pitching. It's hard to win those, uh, you know, 12 to 11 type shootouts in, in a regional. It's right. it's always a guy that comes along and pitches a gem and is just rolling. And, you know, a lot of times these home teams don't know what to do. I think back to, you know, Auburn a year ago, they're they're a home seed and, and get up to that thing. I want to say it was Penn. You know, they lose the first game out of the gates. And, uh, you know, just always the, the Cajuns always seem like that team that, that can give you fits. I know they. They uh, lost in the in the regional round last year, the last two years, I believe. But um, you know, go back to you know less than ten years ago, Tony Robichaux, show they get to the supers twice in twenty, you know, once in twenty fourteen and, sure. and twenty fifteen. So this is a team that uh, you know, if you don't take them seriously, can certainly jump up on you. Uh, tell me a little bit about the the Cajun faithful. Are they planning to to travel and uh, make the trip out to uh, to College Station? Because a lot of room around there outside. Olsen Field at Bluebell Park to uh, to get the tailgating going, which I know the Lafayette folks enjoy to do. Certainly. Uh, I, I believe they are. And I'm sure there are a lot of, you know, Cajun alum that are in the Houston area to begin with. So I, I don't think they'll be short of the red and white uh, in College Station. A couple things that uh, you mentioned. So a good couple of examples, right? The Coastal Carolina Chanticleers, when they won the national championship, a couple of guys in the Super Regional against LSU had rubber arms. Some guys just stepped up. Last year in the Sunbelt Conference Tournament, you know, Blake Marshall stood on his head beating Coastal Carolina twice, just kept on going out there and getting him out. Uh, and, you know, who's going to be that person 
this year? Will it be Marshall? Will it be uh, McGee? Uh, will it be David Christie? Will one of the starters, you know, the, the, you know, the two starters, you know, Morgan and Fluno didn't go four innings in the Sunbelt Conference tournament. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, who can step up uh, in, in that realm. Uh, I think Cajun fans think they can compete. I also know they have lost uh, in College Station before, and that was a while ago. Uh, and they also are not under uh, any illusion that AM isn't isn't you know they're good. They know that, and so they know they know the situation that they're in. And I don't know if you're going to need a break or two, but they're going to have the Cajuns are going to have to play to their potential. And I mean, I don't know if you can hope for a mistake or two. It's not like football where you can, you know, force a turnover or something like that, or basketball where you can hit a three or something uh, or get hot from deep. You know, you're going to have to take any kind of advantage that you have. You have to take. And one of the things the Cajuns do, and, you know, it's really hard to defend, is the double squeeze. So if they get runners on at second and third uh, with less than two outs, obviously, they will try and lay down a squeeze and score two runs. They just did it against JMU uh, in the Sunbelt Conference Tournament, although they lost that game. And it is hard to defend, uh, and it catches teams by surprise all the time. Now, I don't know how to defend it, uh, but it, it's, uh, it's a really thrilling thing. The first time I saw it, Gordy, was Alabama. They did it against Alabama here in that 2014 season. I'm like, did I just see what I think I saw? Two, <laughs> two runs score on a squeeze play, and and – you get that ball down and it tends to work because the runner from second base is it's like a hit and run with a squeeze play. It's crazy. It, it, it's so interesting because I always wonder, you know, with teams when you talk about, you know, peaking at the right time and, and you know, do you want to be peaking come, you know, conference tournament time, uh, you know, but we've seen teams go to and barbecue in their conference tournament and then, you know, make a run through their regional to super regional and get to Omaha. So you never know, but it is interesting to look at the San M team that, just a couple of weeks ago, they're playing Georgia. You know, they're 38 and five. They take the first two games of that series, 15 and five in conference. And then from there, they lose the third game in the Georgia set. Then they go on to lose series against LSU, against Ole Miss. And then they, you know, they were in a tough barn, be barn burner series with Arkansas. And then they just, the bats unload on Arkansas in game three of that series and they win in seven innings. Uh, but then they go to, Hoover in the SEC tournament and they're two and done. They lose to Mississippi, Mississippi state and they lose to Tennessee. And that's that. So I never know, you know, when is the right time to be, to be peaking and, and what's AM's attitude coming into this regional as a top three seed, a top three host site, you know, you win this, you're hosting a super regional uh, in college station, but you know, what's your feeling coming out of Hoover? What's your motivation? Where are you? And, you know, it's always interesting when, you know, you put a, a, a strong rival like Texas into this regional. Sure. Uh, I got to think the Aggies are going to be rooting hard for the Cajuns on Friday night so that they get the Cajuns on Saturday. They don't, right. I, I got to think they don't, if they can avoid facing the Longhorns, they prefer to do that. Well, uh, as we mentioned, it'll come down to pitching. And in the Sunbelt Conference tournament, it was interesting that both Morgan and Fluno, I mean, everyone's going to go on short rest for the most part, right? They did get a bye, so everyone's going to go on short rest. But in this case, they went on extremely short rest with, instead of, you know, it's normally six days, right, in college baseball, but sometimes short rest is five. But in this case, they just went on four days rest. Well, now neither team is dealing with that because both teams, you know, went two, two, two and done. And so, you know, the Cajuns can try and mix things up. Do they do Herman, the soft-throwing lefty, or Morgan, the, the harder-throwing lefty? Uh, I was told that L.P. Langevin, the hard-throwing righty out of the pen, pitches better when he comes in behind Andrew Herman because they are two completely different pitchers uh, compared to if he comes in behind Morgan or Fluno. So, you know, the pitching is still up for debate. I asked you about the Aggies. I don't know what the Cajuns are going to do uh, because they have all options open, right? Everybody is incredibly well rested. Herman hasn't pitched for a couple of weeks. Uh, Morgan Fluno only pitched a couple of innings, but that was Wednesday and Thursday. So everyone is, uh, I don't want to say over rested. So like you said, you know, the Cajuns, you know, uh, Deggs, who formerly coached uh, for a and right, was an assistant coach there before coming over here and then going to Sam Houston and now back with the Cajuns. He's like, it's not impossible until somebody does it. So uh, we'll see. They, they know the task at hand is going to be difficult. Uh, you know, one would think if the Aggies play up to their potential, they're going to win it with that offense. Uh, but 
you know, all you need to do, especially in baseball, is, you know, keep it going, kind of like upsetting in football, right? The longer it goes and the longer you're either in the lead or the other team struggling offensively, which we would not think would be the case with the Aggies. But if somehow the Cajuns can get really good pitching and the Aggies get a little tight the later the game goes, then all of a sudden maybe they are not, so to speak, trusting the process due to uh, the pressure of, you know, what is before them now because they're expected, I'm sure they're fully expected to get to Omaha as a number three seed. One more for you. Talking with Dave Schultz here, uh, covering uh, Locked On Sunbelt and four Sunbelt teams making the uh, postseason, and ironically, all with SEC teams in their uh, in their crosshairs. Uh, James Madison goes to the Ra- the Raleigh Regional, and uh, South Carolina will be there. We got Coastal Carolina heading to Clemson, where Vanderbilt will be. Uh, Southern Miss will head into the Knoxville Regional, of course, with, with Tennessee. And like we talked about, Louisiana heading to College Station in the A&M Regional. If I just asked you on the surface, Dave, you know, forget matchups. If one team of those four were to come out and, and pull the upset in one of these regionals, who would it be? Who Who's impressed you most all season long? Well, I'll, I'll give that to you here in a second. But it was odd, and I know this has to do with the pods and the regional system, but every ACC team, number one seed, got an SEC number two seed. All the SEC number one seeds got a power five number two seed. Whatever, take that for what it's worth, all right? Um, And Southern Miss, who came into the conference tournament with the best RPI, wins the conference tournament, doesn't lose a game. They get the worst two seed in America going to Knoxville, taking on Tennessee. Uh, which there's a little bit of fun with that. That happened last year with the Super Regional and there's no Applebee's and that was a great, social media content for a, a good week. Um, you know, but for Southern Miss and the Cajuns to pull upsets is going to be a big upset, all right? Can they do it? Sure. Are those major upsets? Yes. The best chance to win, the best chance to win is going to be JMU. I don't know how JMU, you know, gets the three seed in that Raleigh Regional, and that's going to be easier for them, although they got to go through South Carolina to get to NC State. But that's easier than Southern Miss trying to go through Tennessee. Uh, and Coastal Carolina, if they can put it all together, they got a bunch of bats. That, that, that lineup, that lineup, and they are the killer bees. If that lineup gets going, it is an unstoppable lineup. Um, they aren't playing at home, which is a you know fortuitous ballpark. I would tell you, and it is about the matchups, I would tell you JMU has the best chance to win a regional because of who is in it. Um and the, you know, the two te- the two best teams, the regular season champ, the Cajuns, and the Sunbelt Conference Tournament champ have their work cut out for them <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a big way. You know, as as Tony Robichaux used to say, uh, it is what it is. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. All the action gets underway Friday, and uh, we'll be watching it all and can't wait to see uh, what teams come out and uh, punch their tickets to the Super Regional. He is Dave Schultz, host of Locked on Sunbelt.